Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Essie, and I'm coming at you on uh, July 23rd, which is Friday, 2010. And I just wanted to talk to you about uh, a little bit about David and Saul, King Saul, King David and King Saul. Um, if you look in 1 Samuel, I'm looking at 1 Samuel chapter 16. And I'll start with uh, verse 11. This is when the prophet Samuel is looking for the new king for Israel and God sent him out to a man named Jesse and he's looking at all of Jesse's sons. Now in, I'll start with 10. It says, And again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he come hither. And he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. So in other words, David was fine. He was handsome. Amen. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil. Now, if you if you read 1 Samuel, if you read the, uh, the events that led up to this, when Samuel anointed King Saul, when he anointed Saul as king, he used a vial of oil, a vial. Now he's anointing David as king, and it says he uses a horn of oil. See the difference? The king that disobeyed God got a vial, a small anointing. And the king that lived for God and had a heart after God got a horn anointing. Amen. And it says in Samuel, uh, verse 13, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. God can anoint you in the midst of all your, in all your relatives, all those that know you, all those from your hometown, those in your family. God will anoint you in front of them and they will be witnesses to the work of God. Might not admit it, but they're witnesses to what God has done for you. Um, and, and notice he was the youngest. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward after the man of God anointed David, put his hands on him, laid hands on him and anointed David. The Spirit of the Lord came. See that anointing, that transference of, of, of the Spirit went from Samuel, the great prophet, to David, the new king. It says, the spirit of the Lord came upon David. After the anointing, the spirit of the Lord comes. God will not give you his anointing if you don't accept him. Amen. So all these people who are non-believers non <laughs> saying that they, they're prophets and prophetesses and they can peer into the future. They can see this and see that and tell you your future and, and discert, you know, decipher your dreams. But they don't believe in God. And God is not with them. He's not in them. Amen. They're liars. Unless you have the anointing, you will not operate in any of God's gifts. God doesn't give his gifts to people that hate him. Would you give gifts to people that hate you? It's something to think about. Amen. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. And verse 14 of 1 Samuel 17 says, uh, 1 Samuel 16, it says, But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The Spirit of the Lord left Saul and entered David. When you are disobedient to God, he can rise up out of you. He can move. He can leave whenever he wants to. He doesn't have to fulfill any lease. He's not bound to any lease. God lives in us. 
And if you don't want to accept him, he'll he'll leave. He'll get ghost. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say. <laughs> Amen. But the Holy Ghost will go. Amen. He'll leave up out of there. He doesn't have to stay there. You don't accept him? That's okay with him. And he left Saul. See, Saul was hard-headed. And Saul didn't do what he was supposed to do. And verse 15 says, And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. See, an evil spirit from God. This is what they're saying. Trouble him. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. I have something to say about that. Now, Saul was an odd king, disobedient. I want to say an evil king. He wasn't an evil king, but he was just disobedient. He was hard-headed, like so many of God's children are now, and so many of our children are now. Okay. But even Saul's family who had lived with him throughout all this time and knew about him said that there was an evil spirit on him and the only thing that can take care of that evil spirit was the David playing for Saul. You know, you say music calms a savage beast. That's the only thing that could take care of it. So the person that you consider as your enemy the person that may have a greater anointing and decided to use the anointing that God gave them. If you want to be lackadaisical with what God gave you, go ahead. I wouldn't. But God will send a ram in the bush. Remember that. God bless you. Reverend Nessie signing out. Have a blessed day.